So hello everyone and welcome to the Nimiton. Today we have a very special event. We're going to be talking with Marco Visconti who is engaged very actively with the post thelemic movement and uh, is listed as the author of the post thelemic Manifesto and I am just here to provide an opportunity to discuss exactly what's going on. Now, now I will say thank you for coming Marco and I have to ask uh, for you to introduce yourself. Not everyone's going to know who you are so it, you know if you would. All right. Uh, thank you so much for having me, first of all. Hmm. And uh, yeah, um, let's say, where do we start? Uh, it was it was like many years ago that I came into this world. I mean, jokes aside, I am. Um, I've been involved with Thelema for the the best part of my my life, and I, by that I mean, you know, I started looking into Crowley since I was a teen, and then it went it went from there. You, some people would say it went downhill from there. Uh, but from my perspective, Telema has always been something that excited me greatly, especially coming, I mean, I was born in Rome, Italy, and uh, if, you are, if you're born there, there's no denying that you, you see Catholicism in all its, uh, all its very multifaceted realities, and most of them are not good. Uh, and so I was like, you know, that's that cannot that cannot be all. That must be something else. And I and you know, I'm, as most people do when they're young, they try to go for the polar opposite. Most of my uh, peers at the time, you know, went for Satanism, which never really worked for me. And I went for what I thought it was, you know, the next best thing. Um, over the years, I received initiation into the various. Uh, organizations that are um, tied to Telema and to Alistair Crowley, um, the DAA first and foremost, and then some years later into the OTO as well, which I guess are the two that are the most well-known names mm -hmm. connected to, to Telema. There are several others, and I ended up, you know, um, being initiated in some of those as well. Just to, to give you an idea, so it's more like 30 years later, I had had time to to really work out the system really try and understand the philosophy and uh, also try or rather like realize all the the problems that are connected to telema per se and uh, i ended up in recent years uh, i ended up leaving the ordo templariantis oto after uncovering uh, um a a series of abuses, uh, sexual abuses, um, in other okay. other unpleasant other unpleasant things. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I, I wrote I wrote about it uh, at length, and you know what? That's one. What that was one one of the moments where I really realized that it was time to, you know, to to move forward with Telema. Like, um, I still think that Telema has a lot to offer, but in its current state. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, like pretty much. Pretty well, much, say it doesn't work. Well, so, what really right. grabbed my attention about the manifesto and why I wanted to have this discussion in a variety of ways was because I was noticing, in when I was reading it, that it, it's in response to something, right? Like it's I, many people that I've seen discuss it almost label it as anti Crowley, but mm -hmm. in essence, I see it as something much bigger than that. It, it's more of a desire for development. But the thing is, is I don't know about it, right? Like I am not a member of the OTO. I have not seen these things and these fluctuations and ideas. So I, I wanted to ask you, you know, what is this supposed to do? Where are you going? Why, why are you looking into the post limit manifesto and this, this particular philosophy uh, for the sake of change? Um, what, what I realize it's, it's really crucial for people to understand that uh, in order for Telema to to bring on the fruits that it promises, it, we must detach it from from its prophet, from from Aleister Crowley. This doesn't mean, nor it has ever meant, that we are here to cancel Aleister Crowley. Uh, <laughs> we we made we made a little joke with it. Um, you know, we, we, we even released a, a funny T-shirt that actually has been selling very well. Hardly people <laughs> nice, want to, okay. see, to see Crowley cancelled. <laughs> but the reality is that um, it's that was supposed to be tongue in cheek, and as usual, uh, sar sarcasm and irony doesn't really it doesn't translate very well on the internet. Apparently, yeah. um, <laughs> nobody is cancelling Crowley for the sake of it. Was Crowley a problematic figure? I think it was as every genius is um, to think that you know to to 
to think that you you can actually get a person and shrine a person and never see any bad sides of, of the person itself it, it's mm-hmm. feel, it's foolish unfortunately that is also precisely what is what has been done in uh, in the OTO and in a certain claimant groups of lineages of DAA for the past 40 odd years and I will try to explain why now um, okay for this for those of you who don't know, uh, well, after Crowley died, his organizations pretty much died with him. There were there were uh, other people that carried on with the OTO, carried on with the AA, but it was they were few and far between. And just to give you a proper understanding, even when Crowley was alive, they were still few and far between. This idea somehow that has been became enshrined in people's mind that you know the OTO is the Illuminati and one of these like uh, uh, <laughs> multi multi million uh, <laughs> uh, secret organizations that rule the world. I mean, we're talking uh, during Crowley's time, maybe a couple hundreds. To these days, there there are, there are two thousand people over the world. Uh, the, you know, the OTO will claim four thousand members, but they because they act, they they also count the inactive members. And that mm-hmm. is that if you do, today join the OTO and tomorrow you forget you join the OTO, but you don't tell them, they will still count you as a member. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? And even that, we're talking about four, like even counting the inactive four thousand people, it's nothing, right? It's it's not a relevant mo- movement right. in any. Well, well, here's However, my thing, though. If you're willing to go this far for such a small body, clearly you're invested into it. You have some sort of vested interest in the idea of supporting what Thelema represents, which is, I, I suspect, why we're here having this discussion. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, because I do strongly believe. I mean, like I, you could, you could almost say that is my true will. That Thelema is, uh, it's good for humanity. Like once you fully extricate it from Crowley's personality and fatal flows of his narcissistic ego, uh, <laughs> you can do you can do a lot of good with it. You can tell you can pretty much like give people tool to find themselves by themselves without being tied to any uh, you know any mind controlling uh, cultic activity if you want <laughs> which is something that happens so often in religions it's something that happens so often you know in in organizations of various kind yeah. again unfortunately this is the nature of the OTO in the last 40 years um, you know going back to that little history lesson for a few a few minutes ago uh, one Crowley died few and far between and then nothing really happened until the, the late 70s and then eight early 80s when the OTO was uh, was reformed, was reactivated in the United States, and that is the OTO you can join today. Um, that, that's the OTO that I joined as well. Uh, some people call it the American OTO. Some people call it the Caliphate OTO because of uh, uh, you know the, the the person at the top, the Frater Superior, for a while uh, styled themselves as Caliph, and you know there's there's also other reasons into it. It's, not, it's just more is more interested for for you know for the for the occult nerds, I guess. But the reality <laughs> is, that you can call it the Caliphate OTO, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, in Freemasonry, we all love our titles, right? I yeah, mean, that's. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And and it's interesting you mentioned Freemasonry because again, like the OTO was supposed telema reaction, telema uh, version of Freemasonry. Very mm-hmm. few people who join the OTO today are aware of that or even care about that, and that's how pretty much a lot of a lot of the message of the OTO ended up uh, being lost in translation and ended up never being divulged to its members. So w- the reason why you know back to the post-Islamic manifesto, why there is a need for that, because. If we keep leaving the the task of instructing, well, the world, the rest of the world, to a small, failing and badly assembled organization as the OTO, we will just lose the the, the momentum of 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 Telema itself. And I feel like it's been happening. You know, I feel right. like you know, I feel like all the problems that the that the OTO has been bringing into this world has really like has been like hampering like stopping that 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 momentum but there's no need for it to continue there so the idea is that at the core of this problems in the OTO is the enshrining of Aleister Crowley the OTO is not so much uh, a, um, a telemic order as is like the Aleister Crowley fan club uh, right. <laughs> like, well, it, it brings the... up something into mind, right? So when I was reading the post Olympic Manifesto and the fact that you acted on this and put it into writing, it, it, it lends me to believe that the 
problems are actually not with the conceptual aspects of Thelema, right? So I noticed yeah. that you mentioned uh, kind of diverting attention into the particular divine aspects in Thelema, like Nui. Yeah. And when I saw that, essentially I was thinking, okay, this is not a uh, spiritual issue as much as it is an organizational and person issue. And by person, what I mean is that the general membership you, you might be finding issues with the general membership and how people are approaching it. Uh, not to say that you dislike specific people, but to say that, and, and as Freemasons, we can both agree on this. Um, there is a problem with who is getting into general occultism in an organized way nowadays. Uh, they yep. don't really reflect what it is that we need or desire or want to do. And that is essentially what I got out of the manifesto. Uh, if you want to make some comments on it, I'd be thrilled to hear them. You, you I mean, you, you nailed it. Um, the problem of the, the problem that the post telephone of manifesto starts to uh, to address, or at least starts to you know put the spotlight on, it's not a doctrinal way. It's not a problem of theology or cosmology or even you know, magic and mysticism. Okay. Even if I do, I, even if I do mention. Um, and when I say I, I am the let's say I'm the signat uh, the signature at the bottom of it, but I'm, I'm not the only one. There's a we've been there's a let's say a, a, coll a college of bishops and Sophias, which are you know the name yes. of a uh, female bishop. T in, tell in me, Miami. tell me about your co-conspirators, please. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, they will they will make themselves known at some point, I suppose. But for now, like it's not just me; it's a group of people. Uh, we've, and we've been thinking about this for for the past like three years now. Oh, um, okay. Say so it's it's something that it's something that will unfold further. I mean, this is just the first step. We released it on on one specific day, which is you know in the wheel of the year. If we want to use that that kind of map of reality, mm -hmm. we released it on candle mass. You know, with the idea when you after a long winter you start seeing the the early uh the early signs of the return of spring if we want so we release it on that day more will more more manifestos or more uh, let's say more bits and pieces will will come up uh in in the next in the close future some will be uh more you know in this in the same vein of the manifesto some will be maybe ideas for new rituals idea for how to engage with telema in a different way and like i said the problem for say that that I and let's say my co-conspirators have <laughs> identified. It's not so much a doctrinal way. Uh, it's even if we do mention the idea of engaging with a you know with a dual ionic uh, concept. Uh, you know, like not so much uh, being focused on living on the ion of Horus, but you know, I introducing the the idea, or rather, not even introducing, like uh, re, let's say, rekindling the idea of the double eon, and so speaking of the eon of math at the, at the same way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, while saying, and this is said in the, this is written in the manifesto, that the the concept of aeonics is what I would suggest, what I would call it, another map of reality. It's not truth. I don't believe. In, I don't I don't fool myself in believing that we can know truth absolute objective ontological truth while living in this world I uh, agree I with you 100% uh, so for me speaking of gods speaking of eons speaking even of magic it's I do because I get results out of it right uh, is very Crowleyan, I suppose, but I do not ascribe any uh, any ontological truth to it. Uh, and this is, I mean, I wanted to say this, and thank you for letting me uh, letting me do that because yeah, uh, yeah. one of the criticism that has been moved to me from, let's say, uh, some um, some corners of the occult web, the kind of people that you know spend some time on Discord and six months later they style <laughs> themselves as Magister Templi, you know, the, you, you know the type, I suppose. Uh, the, this 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 criticism was like, well, uh, you shouldn't speak about these things because you know that that's not the truth. We know the truth. And like, I, I, I cannot even engage with this criticism because for me, it's so beyond the what I what I have seen, what I've experienced, what I what I know for me to work like truth. It's something that we can aspire to and we can try to do it while deceiving others you know not you know, not lying about right you know, i right. don't know you know there there is uh there is an aeon of horus i say the aeon of horus and now the aeon of math the double aeon 
For me, it's a working model. It's a model that when I engage with it, gives me the results I want. Mm-hmm. That's that's what that's what works for me, you know, and that's what I what I'm gonna do. That's what I teach, and that's what I what I write about. Uh, so for me, you know, being accused of not speaking truth, it's it's a bit it's a bit silly. Well, and, see, uh, yeah, I was <laughs> gonna so say like, it's not that I feel like you're not speaking a truth because uh, all truths are personalized, right? E- every experience of the idea of truth in reality is a personal expression of it. So we don't. Yeah. There, there's really no reason to challenge other people on their own truth. But it, when I was looking at the manifesto, uh, essentially, because you mentioned the aeons, specifically the aeons, and, and I was really, really interested in this idea because didn't Crowley himself mention that this type of transition would and should occur? And I believe you make this case, but it, the thing is, it's like, I, I just feel like I remember hearing or at least noting that there was some sort of expected we might say delineation of his influence within Thelema, as if Thelema was itself supposed to take on its own life through the people who supported it. Um, I mean, in in Liber Alve Legis, which is you know the Book of the Law, the, the central text, the the first of the holy books of Thelema, um, it is really spoke of um, you know of a, of a double of a double current. Uh, mm-hmm. It is definitely it, it is hinted. It's basically baked into the the original source code. <laughs> it's already there. Right. Um, Crowley himself, um, Crowley himself ha- speaks about the possibility of the Eon of Math. Uh, however, as soon as some of his uh, disciples, even disciples that he took in in, you know, in great consideration, such as uh, Charles Stansfield Jones, Frater Akkad, as soon as Akkad starts to speak about the Eon of Math, of course, Crowley, realizing that maybe the spotlight might go away from himself, starts to you know cut ties and call everybody mad and crazy which interestingly <laughs> enough that's exactly yeah, right it's classic Crowley and uh, approach like Crow- Crowley was re- and this is also why I feel like we should, should never cancel Crowley we should just you know remove the spotlight from him put him down uh with with maybe you know with many other interesting figures um uh, maybe we can even give him a little bit of more spotlight if needs be right but not to think that uh, we need to have a daddy dilemma that's in- untouchable <laughs> Oh, oh, well, so so I have to ask again, as someone who is not a member of the OTO, do you feel like you see extensive issues with people essentially idolizing Crowley? Because I think that there's like a place for it. Like there's a certain level of recognition that is worthwhile. But in one way or the other, there's got to be someone out there who's going too far with that. Uh, I have uh, not only I've seen it. Uh, I, as I told you, told you before, uh, I feel that the, the OTO really shouldn't call themselves OTO anymore. Should call themselves the Lester Crowley Fan Club or Appreciation <laughs> Society. To the point uh, that one of the big issues in it, but this is since the '80s. It's not new stuff. One of the big issues issues with inside the OTO is that there is a s- small but very vocal and very co- co- cohesive. Uh, let's say faction in the OTO, which has been pretty much at the you know fueling what eventually became the alt right. Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, wait, we really? Had, I did not know, know that. Oh, absolutely! Like uh, there's, um, let's let's not name name, name names. Okay, <laughs> well I, I I know I, of... I will only I will only name one name because he he is passed it, away. Is it Sol Invictus? He... Is it Sol? I know of Sol Invictus, and that is as far as my knowledge yeah. goes. Uh, so, uh, Sol Invictus was a member, Augusto Sol Invictus, his real name is Austin Gillespie, he was a member of the OTO, he was expelled from OTO in 2013 okay. by the person that I was about to mention, James Wasserman. James Wasserman is an author of very many books, some good, some not so much, uh, and he was, was, he was one of the leaders of, of the OTO, like one of the nine degrees, one of what's called the electoral ninth, that is this group of People that in the in the in the eighties came together and you know re restarted the OTO, and James Wasserman was was the mentor of Augustus Sol Invictus. Now that now of course the OTO will will go uh, lengths to to, uh, you know, to to keep it under wraps. Uh, but what it seems to me is that Augustus Sol Invictus was. Uh, Let's say not Sims. Let's say that I have evidence for that, but maybe this will will come out in time in a more coherent fashion. Uh, let's say that Augustus Sol Invictus was a failed experiment. Like, since there is a lot in Crowley 
in Crowley writings, not so much as mystical, magical writings, but more as confessions, like, you know, his diaries, his autobiographies, etc. Okay. There's a lot in Crowley that can and will sustain um, a far-right far ideology, because the man was... I mean, the man was a was a, a chimera. Like he had he had many different, uh, and of, often many different and conflicting, um, f- f- let's say, aspects of, of him inside him. You right. Know, the man was the man was a power bottom, but then he was also a terrible misogynist. Uh, <laughs> he, he was he was very he loved he loved he loved um, you know he loved different cultures. But then he was also very like he, he, he in writing he is very racist. Uh, but at the same time he loved different culture. He respected different culture. Like, he had a big love for you know all the mystic- mysticism around the world. But then if you write his diaries, you almost can almost can never reco- reconcile because the reality is that geniuses tend to be problematic, tend to be difficult to fit into molds. Mm-hmm. What's what's been happening in the OTO thanks to this small but very vocal and very very cohesive uh, faction inside it. Since the 80s, there's always been a big push to try and steer the telemic discourse towards, okay, we Crowley was our prophet, he, he, we have to follow him in everything because he was like, uh, he, he, he attained, and so means that, that means that we also all have to become far-right libertarians. And uh, that is also what has been, I mean, it, you can find if you go to specific lodges, in, especially in the United States, but definitely in Italy, definitely in uh, um, in Australia, definitely in the Eastern of Europe, not so much in the UK, you will find a lot of neo-fascist mentality into into the people that okay. are attracted, and into the people that are you know that that the think that they're they're just like there's they're they're trying to establish the Crowleyan dilemma, which is. Ultra far right in its politic in its politics, right? And, uh, and that, I'm, I'm really not okay with that. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I understand, right? Like, I, I believe that politics and spirituality get fused so often, uh, and yeah. and the fact of the matter is that they really shouldn't, right? Uh, the like, like I understand that spirituality affects our worldview and it affects how we deal with other people. Uh, we might even go so far as to say that certain spiritual like aspects and concepts lend themselves into what we might even say is like a racial supremacy and things like that, which is, you know, again, as someone who's really invested into the Kabbalah, I I have to acknowledge this, you know, Mm -hmm. but it's still unbecoming for me to act on that, you know, and and it's it's interesting to hear that the Lima is itself dealing with its own sort of uh, (laughs) personalized expression of those same experiences. But, you know, the thing is, though, is, is thinking about the manifesto and thinking about what it is that you're, like, displaying, what you're showing, what you're doing, is, is again, it really doesn't feel as anti-Crowley as it is addressing a problem going on with the current body of Thelema, right? Yeah. Like, I feel like you love the religion in the sense, but you are avoiding, or at least avoiding is not the right word, you are trying to put down what's not working, and the thing you, is, is I agree. You, I mean, you, you're absolutely right in that, and I'm I'm glad that you I mean, you picked up on this because I mean, trust me, in some of the criticism that we received at first, it was really like people didn't seem to to read it. People didn't seem to read the manifesto. They just saw some of the maybe more um, abrasive tones that we used against Crowley, but that was done to enact. A reaction and oh, oh right. boy, we we did an actor reaction. Right? <laughs> the the problem is like if the problem like if you read it, it's it's not a it's not anti Crowley. It's more about let's focus on the social aspects of it. How do we how do we actually finally put together a movement, a community that is properly functional, like that mm-hmm. is work that is gonna work for for everyone? Because again one of the aphorisms and tenets of Telema is every man and every woman is a star. And that means everyone, you know, there's no, uh, it's not like, like, you know, you know that meme, like, did I fucking stutter? <laughs> like, it's like, it's really <laughs> is everyone, right? Yeah. Well, um, it's one of those statements that we get from the ancient Greeks, right? I am of earth absolutely. and starry heaven. You know, it, it's one of those famous quotes that is an acknowledgement of the individual's, like, not just self-preservation, but also influence in the world. And absolutely. 
in the same manner, I mean, we kind of represent that idea, right? Like, I mean, we're just regular people like anybody else, but we mm-hmm. are acting and expressing in such a way that we can change things. Um, yeah. As someone who has had experiences within occult bodies, particularly organized esoterica, I simply cannot be upset with what it is that you're doing because it is in response to something. And I believe that you're making a very serious case in protection of the Lima, right? I think many people might assume or suspect that you're trying to change the Lima, but in reality, I believe you are trying to protect the Thelemic discourse and experience. Uh, you even I mean, mentioned like problematic individuals uh, with you, like abuse. That, that, that's precisely what we're trying to do. Um, another, you know, another criticism that was, that has been moved towards the post Thelemic manifesto uh, and me in particular is like, well, uh, you just want to be the new Pope of the Lama. I have been saying, I mean, it's written, it's written in manifesto that, you know, it's against hierarchy. It's written in the, some of the commentaries that we left on Reddit, on Facebook, um, and plenty of other places. Like we are, we do not want to be the new OTO. We do right. not want to be the new AA. Um, the manifesto was issues, issued sorry, uh, under the auspices of Ecclesia Gnostica Universalis, which is my, uh, my let's say, you'd say like my Thelemic church. However, you cannot join it. We are not open. <laughs> like, it's not something <laughs> that, that, oh, well, this is a recruitment drive. No, this is more about reminding everybody who wants to be a Thelemite that Thelema is about you learning to be with yourself, learning to be a star in yeah. company of other stars. It's not about joining yet another hierarchy that will give you the little badge or the little title or anything else. I would I would go as far as say that if you engage with Telema, the initiation is baked into the system as it is that it's the Holy Guardian Angel um, and whatever that uh, that entails that will initiate you. Going through the through the initiation rituals of the OTO, which are beautiful, by the way, right? Some of the right. Most, some of the most beautiful rituals I've ever uh, I ever had the pleasure to be part of, both as an officer and as a candidate. Or oh. even if you go through the initiation rituals, the the only few that exist as a ceremonial ma- magic uh, rituals of the AA, uh, I, I that is. That is really is like a, a formal recognition of where you are with your own initiation. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody can initiate you in Telema. It's about finding your true will. It's about putting down the the work, the great work, if you want, to really go through the the alchemical stages, all of them, and all the gruesomeness that comes with you know really <laughs> engaging with initiatory work, in order to come back from the other side as a star. And uh, I feel that people forgot this, especially, I mean, maybe not so much. I mean, I would say like humanity I mean, people that are engaged, that are engaging with uh, esoterica in a healthy way, they, everybody knows that. I mm-hmm. feel that te- telemites have forgotten that because they're still living under the very important, but also very oppressive shade of Aleister Crowley and of those who came along and just basically jumped on Crowley's bandwagon before everybody else and then started gatekeeping and say, no, 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 we are the masters. We haven't done anything. We, are, don't, we don't have anything to show you apart from the fact that we bought the copyrights. So you've got to listen to us. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's not, that's, I mean, I, like I said, I didn't leave Rome and um, my, my, my family has ties with the Vatican. So I didn't leave that life. <laughs> to just join right, uh, right. A, smaller, a smaller, less functioning Vatican. You know, that that's not that's not it. <laughs> that's not right. it at all. Well, and that's the thing is it uh, coming back, it's just like, you know, when I was when I was reading through it, I noticed um, like I said, a certain level of I, I don't want to just say experience, but a certain level of dedication, right? Like I, I genuinely believe that anyone who is engaged in the post Lima manifesto does love the Lima. Right. Like you do care. You care enough to act and, and to say something like this, which is a big deal. You know, it, it displays a certain level of commitment. Um, so uh, there's also, I mean, just to add something, there's also to say that in, in the manifesto, we do state very clearly that um, this is con- we're going to engage with magical and mystical working in the next three years so that our hope is that by the time 120 years will have passed from the reception of the Book of the Law, we might have something 
coherent to offer to people, like a series okay. of maybe a series of rituals, a series of uh, philosophical treat, uh, treatises. I, I won't write it because I'm not good at it, but there's, I mean, there are people <laughs> that are, that are very well ver versed in philosophy that are working on this. And uh, I feel that this is a beginning of a process. We might not be able to do it, you know, you, know, you, 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 you set up with, with the best of intentions and then it's down to, well, your focus, your will, to prove it and I hope we'll be able to I've noticed already that you know for every criticism we had 20 people coming around and say this is good yeah uh, I'm, I'm curious about it let me know what we can do about it. you know there there is a lot of people out there I feel especially in the younger generation um, that would love to be more would, would love to be more engaged with dilemma but they've seen too much of the bad side of it. Unfortunately, especially since the last few years, we've been living through historical, like major historical events. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel that this is what we are setting up to do because, again, I want Telema to go on for the next two thousand years. Uh, I won't be there. In, I won't be. I won't be there in fifty years. Like I'm forty three. <laughs> oh now. gosh. <laughs> So, you know, like, I, I mean, I, don't well, say I it. It, it. It might not be true. Yeah. You might get unlucky yeah. and live way longer than you anticipate. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> uh, but my, my point is that, um, and something that I noticed that the, the mainstream organized dilemma, the, the, the OTO, the AA have not been doing, mm -hmm. these people has had 40 years to establish, you know, a new generation. They've done everything they could to keep the new generation out they to keep you know to to not give them uh to, to not grow them well okay. i hope that with this new movement if it's going to be a movement the 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 emphasis the clear emphasis will be more about you know you have to create something that can stand the test of time that other people can come along and be part of it without feeling that they are left behind because you know, there is a there's a dad there's yet yet another daddy dilemma at the top <laughs> that needs to be taken care of. Um, yeah, no, I I really respect that. Like, I feel like that's something that is very poorly addressed in occultism, particularly organized occultism. It it needs to be acknowledged that there's a certain level of expression from the individual that gets stifled by mm -hmm. rigidity, and it, it's not to say that we shouldn't have some sort of like initiatic experience with limits and goals, but we should be open to the development of those people and how they get there. And, and we see this everywhere, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, again, I know the post limit manifesto itself does not really address this, but the fact that you are personally stepping into it means a lot to me, if, if that's okay. I mean, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, from the early uh, reactions that, I mean, definitely this has, this has left a little mark, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, nobody will talk about it in one year. Somehow I doubt that. Yeah, um, no, that's impossible because I'm making a video on it, right? <laughs> We're here right now. Exactly, exactly. It's only going to get worse. <laughs> well, um, that's fine because, again, another thing that I think Telemites should be not shy away from this conflict. Not just seeking, you know, just seeking conflict for the sake of it. Oh, but, yeah. uh, I mean, the, the, the Horusian spirit is one of force and fire. And um, it's okay. It's okay to, to weather a battle or two if you, are, if, if you have like the, the goal well set in front of your mind. Right. So. right. so I actually wanted to talk about something very briefly, by the way. And this was brought up a couple times, but we didn't really address it. You mentioned like certain aspects of abuse within like the Thelemic orders, like the OTO. Um, mm -hmm. I know that the manifesto is not necessarily in response to that specifically, but what are your hopes? And I mean this from a personal level, not from a philosophical level. What are your hopes in how we might approach the religion of Thelema after this? Like, like, like when you act on this, when you engage with this manifesto and these changes, what are you expecting to see be different? If you engage with the manifesto, you will, you know, like, like we're doing here today, you will have to dig a little bit deeper and even ask yourself the question why this is happening, right? And right. so you will have to, will, you will have to instruct yourself and learn about, you know, the, the, the abuses that come almost they're, you know, ingrained and uh, uh, hard coded into 
religious hierarchies. Mm -hmm. My hope is that we can leave behind the religious hierarchies for good. Uh, and my hope is also that by removing Crowley from the spotlight, once again, let me state it clearly, not canceling him, but removing <laughs> Crowley from the spotlight, we will have, we will be able to engage more directly with the fact that yes, at the very uh, core of Thelema, at the, at the, at the, at the you know, ground zero of Thelema, there was a man that was highly problematic and highly abusive. The man that, that did engage in terrible racism, terrible misogyny, uh, rape, because I mean, we, we tend to forget that um, the vision and the voice was an instance of Crowley sexually abusing Victor Neuburg in the desert. Oh my God. Um, yeah, <laughs> something that it's not really discussed many times because of okay. course the vision and the voice. <laughs> yeah, you know, all the right. Vision, <laughs> Uh, I mean, the Oof. vision and the voice is a fantastic telemic term, but when you read Neuberg's diaries, um, there's, a there's a beautiful book by, uh, let, me, let me find it, let me get it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but there's a beautiful book by Gene Overton Fuller called The Magical Dilemma of Victor Neuberg. I have a copy here. I, I just wanted to make sure that I remembered the, 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 the title correctly. Okay. Uh, it, it really speaks about, you know, Neuberg big... Uh, I mean, big problems, big mental issues, issues, problems that he had to face after realizing that his his master uh, pretty much sexually abused him to, and used him as a vehicle to, you know, uh, to receive more magical, mystical uh, experiences. So the problem there is that we cannot shy away from this anymore. This is what I'm hopeful for, that going forward, we can look at Crowley and say Crowley was not a saint. This is what happens in the OTO. Even right now, in, in those, uh, if, you, if you look at the very little uh, online presence of the OTO, you will either have the, the, the small vocal minority of the alt-righters that we discussed before, you will also have a lot of people that are engaged with, with the LGB, LGBT, uh, Q plus a community okay. that that will try and go lengths to excuse Crowley behavior because Crowley at the end of was you know Crowley was gender fluid Crowley was engaging with uh, open sexuality so we must defend him at any cost how mm -hmm. about we just accept him for what he was and we move on <laughs> so how about instead of always discussing about Crowley we speak about all the others that have already been there in the telemic um, in the telemic milieu in the telemic tradition that always get forgotten to some degree because part of it is because the OTO must you know downplay the role of everybody else because they don't have the copyright rights to everybody else mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and also because um some people just want to have uh, this mythical figure this jesus right well and... i was that's what i was going to get at i was about to mention it the thing is is we have like a contextual and societal inclination towards a person right we, we see people as more valuable than their thoughts Right. Like Absolutely. when we connect with someone and what they say, what they think and what they express to us, it, we really have an emotional connection to them. And yeah. I feel that that is probably the main issue that you're discussing right now is, is this idea, this idolization of a particular personage that is, while very effective and very necessary in Thelema, it's a huge component of the Thelemic Mysteries. It's still... it, it, has been, it has been a huge component so far. I don't think I don't I don't think it, it has to be, you know, because mm -hmm. when you read when you read the, the, the holy books, when you engage with the, when you engage with the magic of the limit itself, it's all about yourself finding your the best version of yourself mm -hmm. and doing, you know, living the best life in full harmony with the world and the universe around you. I think that at some point it became a cult of personality okay. because it's easy. It's much easier, as you said, since since we we as human, humans we tend to always you know engage with um, you know with the with the with the hero worship complex, and since we are still coming from two thousand years of you know, Odeonic religions such as Christianity that put one man at the center of, of the play, 
uh, Jesus, Muhammad, I mean, Moses, if you want to go back to, or, I mean, or one of the many uh, patriarchs of, um, of um, uh, Jew, uh, Jewish mysticism. Yeah, like well. Moses. Uh, yeah, Moses is a big one. He, he's he's not exactly. a cult of personality, but people do get very, very obsessed with the expressions exactly. of Moses. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's still it's still so something that we know. Like, okay, so if Telema, Telema I I feel that a lot of people come to Telema because they want something new, but then deep down they realize that that something new is to do a lot of personal work. I mean, I guess the work the the, the term that goes along with the kids today is shadow work, right? <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that's that's Telema really is about shadow work, a lot of it, mm -hmm. constant because it's alchemical in nature. It's it's something that you are you are becoming the Athanor of transformation and once you once you light, light you know light up that fire it keeps burning till it does you know it has yeah. really like uh, destroyed all the dross that surrounds you and that's problematic for a lot of people because it, it becomes it becomes scary maybe they're not ready maybe they're not ready because those uh organizations that were supposed to facilitate the process they've not been doing it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to go back to your to your to your original question here, I really hope that the post dynamic manifesto is going to start seeding in for real the idea that in the new eon, uh, whether it is, you know, the eon of Horus, where it is it is the double eon of Horus math, we we can discuss philosophy for another time, I guess. <laughs> but I, I really feel like that the seed is people to engage with the reality that no one is coming to save you uh daddy crowley is dead and you have to save yourself possible because there's nothing to save yourself from and that's that that, that kind of changes the perspective for people a lot because it's so much easier to just go along with the ride with somebody else driving right and all and as opposed of saying no no now i, I am the one who has to drive i have to be the right know, i am in, right. i'm in control well here's the thing here's the thing though should sh we should as individuals aspire to that right L like i personally believe we should aspire to self-elevation not in some crazy way but to the extent that we develop uh i, I think in the expression of self-will even yep. it, the expression of self-will is not rooted in other people it is entirely independent hence the individual you know it's uh it's not that I'm saying, and as I acknowledged earlier, and you've also stated, this is not a cancel Crowley type of situation as much as it is a desire or an expression and push for you as a person to do more with who you are, right? Is, yeah, is that, is that absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Uh, and again, for me, it really should be... You know, in my in my ideal world, we shouldn't need a post dynamic manifesto. We shouldn't need to engage with post dilemma, right? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. because like, as I said, like telema, telema, this is what telema is about. This is about you know the, everything we've been discussed. Unfortunately, here we are. Um, I guess that there's yet another um, societal um, side to it, and that is that unfortunately, telema has attracted a lot of you know that kind of edge lord mentality. Uh, and yeah. and we need to get rid of that as well, uh, there, because we we cannot we can we cannot we cannot really keep fueling this very abrasive and toxic understanding of the lemma as you know the the epitome of of the solar will, but the, the, it's almost like a, that the, the sun that destroys and scorches as opposed to nurtures, and that's. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not it. <laughs> well, Again. That's that's actually something I wanted to get into. Uh, and, and we have experience within Freemasonry and other occult bodies. It, it's very well understood that egotistical expression seeks avenues to do so, right? <laughs> so we see in many, many times in esoteric bodies, again, particularly the organized ones, people who are there for titles, people who are there to be recognized and to be acknowledged, and they like to flaunt these things. And I don't know how bad this is in Thelema, but I know it's a problem in other places. So I'm going to go ahead and wager that if you take that and throw a couple edgelords in, it's not very good. It's definitely it's that not very good at all. <laughs> uh, I would say that, that that in organized dilemma, from the, from what I've seen, um, it's not so much of a problem because, it, or rather, let, let, let me reformulate. 
Um, it is it is a problem because but the the way the problem um, you know expands itself is a little bit different because it's so tightly gatekept like um, you cannot really go past the fourth degree in EOTO. Uh, you have to be part of a secret group. Uh, you know this. Uh, you have to be part of the real AA, and you have to to prove your your loyalty to the to the higher ups. And then maybe you will be given fifth degree. And then if you keep proving your loyalty, you maybe will be given the sixth degree. Um, when I left the OTO in 2018, there were only 32 ninth degrees in the world because they're Bill Bree's best friends. And so you can imagine that it's very different as in, in as it, it is in different, like maybe a Freemasonry or maybe other, uh, I know, Golden Dawn or whatever, where maybe titles are given and people can go around flaunt them. In, it's, it's almost more, I say, it's almost more perverse because here you have Telema, which again, it's something that should, you know, drive the initiate towards the understanding of their, you know, the freedom. And instead, the people in the OTO tend to become as slavish as possible, because then maybe one day they will be given yet another little degree. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it really is, uh, it's crazy. But at the same time, this is also what fuels the the toxicity of the edge lords because those that those who, who gave maybe maybe they got fifth or sixth degree it's very rare that people even get to seventh and beyond but mm -hmm. when they give that those are the ones that become the most vicious because they're like oh you know what i've been i've been like i've been let's say leaking books for the last 20 years no, nobody's gonna take me you know my you know my little badge uh Whenever I was actually um, dealing with the abusers, some of the worst abusers okay. were sadly women, women at the top. Wait, because... wait, okay, hang on. That's that's a hot take. Uh -huh. That's a hot take. I don't know shit about that. It's uh, it's a hot take, but unfortunately, not a wrong one. Uh, because once you spend so many years. Uh, of you know dealing with uh, systematic misogyny and bro talk in uh, in little in little lodge rooms uh, mm -hmm. um, and maybe like it's it's uh, you you now you are in a position of relative authority, then it's when I've seen people you know what's called the electoral college becoming incredibly vicious, not just towards me, incredibly vicious towards other women that were blowing the whistle on rape cases, for instance. Things like, you know, the classic things like, oh, you know, oh that never happened to you. It never happened to me. So it cannot happen to you. You know, you know, you know the, class, the classic, uh, you know, the classic blueprint of how you, you become toxic and abusive in groups like this. Oh, it was from, oh my it was, God, it was, dude. It was, it was mostly from women. Yeah. I, <laughs> so I mean, I, it's really, I know it's the, really fucked up. Yeah, I know the statistics about how these things occur. Like, uh, a lot of people don't know, but statistically, like, many mothers are actually far more likely to engage in certain activities that we find very, very uh, destructive and terrible for the youth. Um, but my God, I, I did not really... And see, here's the thing, is, is like, coming back just to the discussion of the post Lima Manifesto, it's, these are things that are not talked about in the manifesto at all but I feel no. like you are lightly attempting to address them as issues. And I just uh, respect I think, that. I mean, you know what? I think that at the core of the manifesto, there is fundamentally a cry against hierarchy. I, 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 I would even say, let me, let me, let me refine that. A cry against constructed hierarchy. Okay. Because, you know, like, you, you can say that there is a hierarchical um, order in the universe. Uh, you know, the, even the idea that you, you refine yourself and, uh, you know, you'll chemically transmute the lead into gold. You might, you might read that into some sort of mystical hierarchy, like you're, you're bettering yourself. And I am 100% into that. I'm not into, you know, full anarchy and uh, just chaos, uh, chaos reigns, you know. Uh, <laughs> But what I am denouncing and what I'm, you know, again, seeding the ideas, it's against constructed hierarchy because constructed, uh, constructed hierarchy will always, always bring abuse, will always generate toxic environments. We always stray away as far as possible from, from the ideas of dilemma. Well, maybe 
you know, maybe this is this is you know hard coded into the OTO uh, in the Minerva degree. I shouldn't really speak out loud of this, but I will. Uh oh. In the Minerva, uh -oh. in, the, in the Minerva degree, you are basically said uh, given at some point a lesson. It's called the first paradox of philosophy, whereby you're you're told that in order to become free, you must subject yourself to uh, to discipline and hierarchy. I'm 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 not quoting verbatim, but that's yeah. The no, I I yeah, I get it. And you know what? I can I can I can get behind the idea. I can get behind that in order to hone your will, in order to hone uh, your um, aspirations right. towards well, freedom. Well, it's, it's important. Yeah, I was going to say it's the it's the paradox of existence, right? So yeah, the, exactly. the whole factor of existing in the idea of the physical world and seeking spirituality exists within that same exact paradoxical philosophy. It's um, yeah. a weird way to do it, though. <laughs> I'll say that, that's a very awkward thing. You know, you know, can you imagine like the young people going through, but yeah. Oh. And, 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 and the thing is that, like I said, maybe it's our coded in how the audio was constructed because a Crowley at the end of the day, he thrived on being, uh, you know, the master at the top and B because let's not never forget that even in the OTO's uh, founding documents, it is written quite clearly that the OTO is the first of the great orders of old to have accepted the law of dilemma. And I am quoting verbatim now. Okay. That, that means that it's not new. It's, it's something that is almost like a transitional, um, a transitional order. It's something that should right. be seen as, okay, we have this now, which pretty much is telemic Freemasonry, but Freemasonry, as we both know, it's very much... It's very much Holdeonic, right? It's very much <laughs> structured about, around patriarchy <clears throat> and all those constructs. Uh, 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 no comment. <laughs> you can't possibly comment on that. <laughs> but, but my point is, it is, it is written in, in the OTO founding documents that it, it is not something new. It's something old that has accepted the law of dilemma. Most people, most people don't read the, don't read the, the fine print, I suppose, <laughs> and, uh, and and this is what uh, and this is what we have. So I do hope sincerely that, like with this little seed that has been planted, um, and as I said before, more will come. We will keep putting the spotlight on the problems. The problem is not the theology, and I'm I mean you know, I'm happy to be proven wrong, you know. Okay. But it's I, I I cannot I cannot say that the problem is in the theology of dilemma because it has worked for me consistently for the last thirty years. Uh, that's a long long, long time. <laughs> like it's made right. sense most of, most of my life, um, and I know it has worked very well for many other people. Uh, I feel that it has not expanded the way it could because of all these problems, and the problems are. With with humanity and uh, the limitation of, of 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 the average human to to just not not be free, not be in control, not be the driver of their own their own ship, if they, of course. If they want. So, well, yeah. Marco, uh, I got to be honest. As someone who has been in a position similar to yours and has tried to act on things in their own way within their own occult bodies, I respect what you're doing. I appreciate what you guys are trying to put forward. I realize that you are not being destructive, but you are trying to be revolutionary and not in a way that is egotistically inclined or is artificial. You have a genuine love for Thelema and for that, I respect you. Thank you so much. And it's been, it's been really a pleasure to be part of, uh, of, of to be, to be joining into the Nemeton again. And I say again, because <laughs> I, I grew up near Nemi. So I used to go to oh, the Nemeton. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I like it. Well, look, man, seriously. Uh, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for this discussion. Thank you for expanding a little bit on everything that's going on in terms of the post Salemic manifesto. Uh, and I appreciate you being willing to just put yourself out there a little bit more. So, yeah. all right. Well, well hey, I'll, I'll catch you soon. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.